So this next step is discovering the significance of the Seder plate and the order of the Haggadah. So there are so many beautiful commentaries on the sequence on how we place the items on the Seder plate. In Chabad Hasidus, there's a beautiful teaching by the Rebbe Rashab that we have the three matzahs underneath. And then we have the six items on top of the matzahs. What does this symbolize? This symbolizes that within everything in creation, there are lights and there are vessels. The, in, within our own physical self, our vessel is our body, and the light is the soul from Hashem. <clears throat> of course, we need the vessels because without vessels, there would be so much light, it would blind us. Similarly to if you gaze directly at the sun, it's so bright that it's actually perceived as darkness. It's too intense for us to perceive. So we need vessels. We need to put sunglasses on. We need to filter it a bit so that we can actually receive the divine light in a soft way that is not harmful to us, but that is that allows us to receive the light and integrate the light. So our bodies are here in this world. On one hand, they conceal the light of our soul, but on the other hand, they allow our neshama to dwell and exist within this world. So the Seder plate represents this idea. We have the matzahs, which are the vessels, and the other, the other items are the light. And that's why we put the matzahs underneath, to receive the light from the vessels, to receive the light in the vessels. And it's a custom of Hasidim to have a matzah that's a concave, which actually looks like a, a basket, a receiving vessel, to receive the light from above. These items also correspond to the spherot. And the Arizal explains each item and how they connect to the spherot. And of course, the spherot are also sourced and emanated in our own bodies. So the Seder plate is really a deep exploration of our own psyches and our own energetic systems. So the matzahs represent the three intellectual faculties of the mind, and the rest of the six items correspond to the emotional spherot. Um, chesed, Gavura, Teferis, Netza, Chod, and Yesod. And the question is, where is Malchut? And Pesach, the mouth that speaks, this month of storytelling is a month really connected to Malchut, which is speech, which is the mouth. And the answer is the Malchut is actually the Seder plate itself. So this is the order of the Seder plate. Um, why do we have four cups of wine? It alludes to many things. In the Talmud, it says that each, four, each cup of wine corresponds to the four redemptions. I will bring you out. I will save you. I will redeem you and I will take you. They also correspond to the four exiles, the Babylonian exile, the Persian, the Greek, and the Roman. They, of course, correspond to the four sons or four daughters. Um, for those of you who know Kabbalah, these also correspond to the four worlds. And my favorite is that they correspond to the name of Hashem, the four letters in the name of God, the Yud, and then the He, and the Vav, and then the He. And because I love yoga and I love embodied Torah, the letters of Hashem's name are also, res also reside in the body. There's different opinions of this. Um, in general, the Yud is the mind. The He is the top torso and arms. The Vav is the long spine connecting the higher and the lower. And the second He are the legs and the feet. In other opinions, we have the Yud is the right brain. The He is the left brain. The Vav is the whole body, the, the spine, and the bottom He is the feet. 
So I love these four cups of wine and how they really correspond to the body. And in general, the whole Seder goes through the order of the Kabbalistic stages of sweetening. And this is taught extensively by Rub Ginsburg. So Bedika Hamid is connected to the stage of Hachna'a, which is submission. First, we have to submit and realize what our Egypt is, see what's holding us back, be aware of the darkness in our life. Then the next stage is Havdala, separation. We have to separate ourselves from our Egypts, realize we are not what enslaves us. See the separation of our freed awareness and our current reality. And then the highest and best level is Hamtaka, the whole point, which is the sweetening. When we see our pain and suffering and we separate it, separate from it, then we can begin to transform it and bring out the holiness of it and sweeten it. Almost like if you've seen something in your past that you really struggled with and it's been enough time and you worked on yourself enough that you can see actually how it benefited you and how Hashem brought it into your life as a way to uplift you and transform you and bring out your inner sweetness. And really that's what the wine represents. Grapes are crushed by the, even it says in the Gemara, how humiliating grapes are stomped on by the bottom of our feet. But yet when we stomp on these precious, luscious grapes made by God, we bring out the deepest secret. And wine, yain is gematria sowed secret. When we're really crushed and we're really downtrodden, sometimes our greatest light emerges and that's how we create sweet and royal wine.